Welcome everyone to this evening's presentation. I'm going to talk about um, heart disease. Uh, heart disease is the number one killer in the United States. Uh, my name is Lorena Carroll and I am an Ayurveda wellness consultant and also a certified teacher of Transcendental Meditation. So we're gonna talk about heart disease and how you can prevent it, how you can reverse it if you already have it, and how you can do it in a natural way. Most of you might be, of course, working with a doctor, and that's, that's wonderful, and you should have a, um, a medical doctor overseeing you know, your condition for heart disease always, so I, I highly recommend that. But often if you find a medical doctor that's interested in helping you also in a natural way, because often the doctor is not going to give you a real good, I mean, doctors may say, okay, you know, reduce your saturated fats and exercise and do all these things, but they're not going to give you comprehensive herbs and diet and lifestyle changes as you will get in Maharishi Ayurveda. And I say Maharishi Ayurveda because we have uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was the one who founded Transital Meditation and then he also revived this ancient system of healthcare called Ayurveda. And if you can go to my website, which will be uh, posted on the end of this video, you can actually uh, go to the website and read more about it. But the whole idea is to prevent disease before it arises. Now, of course, if you already have a disease, then we will you know, take care of that as well. But prevention is really the key because once you've damaged the, you know, the cells and, and you know, the organs and the tissues in the body, once you've damaged those areas, then it's very hard to repair. Um, if it goes you know, too far along. So in terms of um, heart disease, what ends up happening in all disease is that toxins or ama accumulates. And so in, you know, they get, the channels get clogged. So often in um, you know, heart disease, you may have problems breathing. Uh, you may have plaque buildup on the carotid artery. You may have high blood pressure. And so you're wheezing more when you're going up the steps. And this is simply due to accumulation of toxins. Well, how do toxins arise? Toxins arise from poor diet and poor lifestyle choices. Now, some of you here, you might be exercising, you might be doing everything wonderful, you feel like you're doing everything good for your health, and then you still have high blood pressure or you have high cholesterol, uh, or you, you know, you're having to be on some uh, types of medication for hypertension. And the reason is, is also due to stress. Stress is really going to impact our health in a very negative way. So you might have stress at home, you might have stress at work, and just working so many hours, which most uh, employers are going to push you beyond the 40 hour limit. You know, it's 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. I love listening to uh, Ariana Huffington, who's a strong supporter of Transdental Meditation, who talked about uh, when she was sitting at the desk, at her desk, and she fell asleep. And uh, she was so exhaust, exhausted, she just fell asleep right at the computer, hit her head on the way down because she fell asleep, and then she just started to collapse and, you know, cut her, you know, eye open. And, uh, and then she, she said... When I was sitting in the doctor's office waiting area, that's when I could really think about my health and what am I doing. And so she did a huge transformation in terms of you know, cutting back hours, taking care of her health, and I think a lot of employers are in that direction. So I would recommend trying to get an employer that is supportive, especially if you already have heart disease. I mean, I know so many people that I teach transcell meditation to or that I give Ayurveda wellness consultations and they're telling me how many people they know in the company or personally that have either had a heart attack or one lady unfortunately had somebody at age 40 die of a heart attack. I have people coming to me age 25 and 30 with high blood pressure. That was, we've never had that high level of stress that people that young would have you know, high blood pressure. And now we're seeing it even in teenagers as young as age 13, 14, and 15, high blood pressure. What are we doing to our children? What are we doing to ourselves? As a nation, as a country, the United States must really be the leaders in healthcare. Get rid of all the negative food, all the fast food chains. 
really demand that they be healthy, demand that they don't, through the media, uh, you know, propagate all this fast food and junk food because it's addicting. And you might have been fallen victim to this, where you're in a rush, you grab something, and it's not the right food. But here, so, to not, so it's not all doom and gloom, we're going to talk about what can you do to positively affect your health. So the first thing that we that I always recommend is transcendental meditation. That's the mental component to it because there are some people that are very slender, they work out, they eat well, and they still have high cholesterol, they still have high blood pressure, they have hypertension. Uh, maybe they've had a heart attack already. And that is due to um, stress. When you are stressed, your vessels, they get tight, they get really tight. And Transcendental meditation relaxes them. It reduces the plaque buildup on the carotid artery just by giving them deep rest. When, you, when, you, when the mind is rested, the body gets deeply relaxed. And there's no other state other than transcendental meditation. Even sleep doesn't give it to you. Transcendental meditation is deeper than sleep, one 20 minute sitting, and allows you to just deeply relax. All the muscles relax. And that doesn't allow the plaque to build up on the carotid artery because you're getting more nutrients to the cells. When you're relaxed, your digestion is better, metabolism is better, all of that. So vitally important to learn transcendental meditation. It's nothing new. It's been around for 60 years. Everyone's doing it. 700 research studies. It has you know all. And there's a wonderful book by Dr. Robert Schneider called Total Heart Health. I highly recommend you read it if you have you know, heart disease or if you have it genetically maybe in the family. Read that book. It'll give you a lot of good information. So after you learn transcendental meditation, that's going to be your first step to helping with heart disease. The second thing is make sure that you are exercising. Exercise, and it doesn't have to be a one hour in the gym because a lot of the people that I know and that I see, they're all or nothing. But if you do a 30-minute brisk walk five days a week, that is going to help you, know, you reduce your chances of, of heart disease exponentially. People think they have to go in the gym and pump iron for an hour. Yes, I would like you to also do some weightlifting. Not you know, that you have to become you know, the Hulk or anything, but that you do weight resistance. There, there's even these bands that are uh, resistant bands and you can take them with you when you travel. They're actually quite good. They will build up muscle if you know how to use them properly. So that's a simple tool. You want to do a little, but also yoga. So yoga is good for stretching, for relaxation, for flexibility. Because then on top of heart disease, you might get aches and pains and sciatica and all these other things, and that you don't need. So exercise, yoga, a little bit of weightlifting, but even in the beginning um, phases, of your new routine for cardiovascular disease, just brisk walking, that'll be enough. Don't overthink it, just even during your lunch hour, grab a buddy, because as you see, people are sitting all day, they say sitting is the new smoking, very, very bad for your health. So you've gotta get out there. A lot of companies, I actually teach meditation in a company where they actually have treadmills where you can put your computer there and they encourage uh, they have a health club on site, and they encourage it very much. So exercise, exercise, that is um, the first thing that I want you to. Um, and, you know, the second thing would be nutrition, because you really have to have a good diet. So what is a good diet in Ayurveda? Well, you want to avoid saturated fats. You want to avoid processed foods, and you want to avoid frozen foods. The other problem is even if you don't go out for McDonald's or, or you know, fast food, if you have eating too much frozen food, canned food, that doesn't have a lot of what we call prana, life force in it. It's kind of, you know, past its prime. The nutritional level in, in foods that are frozen or canned food is very, very low. So you're going to want to get fresh foods. Now, this is more at time and energy. There's no doubt about it. But what is your health worth? So this is where I'm trying to encourage you. And I have cooking classes on my website as well. Just find some basic food that you like. Do you like rice? Do you like quinoa? Do you like uh, buckwheat? 
find a grain that you like, find some legumes, just avoid all this red meat and all these other meats and stuff. You can, you don't have to be vegetarian, but try to eat as little meat as possible. And I've, I've never really been so emphatic about talking about, you know, meat and chicken and fish and things like that so much. But I, I um, saw something on the news about meat glue and it, it, it just shocked me that they're putting meat glue and they're getting away with it, which is toxic. It's completely toxic. But meat is toxic. If you're not, if you want to eat chicken, fish, or any type of beef, I would do make sure it's a hundred percent organic, and you are cooking it. I would be when I would eat out, I would eat vegetarian, and I'm very serious. And I know that this is going to bring doom and gloom to many of you. What I'm saying, but there's a wonderful book called Forks and Knives, which actually goes through what happens in the process of meat. They put these antibiotics in it and they put these preservatives in it and it's just not fresh so if you're living on a farm or near a farm or you have a whole foods go get your your meat fresh it's good that because that's going to you know change and even dr oz just came out with a video vegetarians actually have a less risk of heart disease even vegans now you don't have to go vegan in ayurveda lacto vegetarian is best where you can have ghee clarified butter if you cook it and have it in moderation it's not going to in increase your cholesterol although it does come from butter and you can have all these other you know wonderful um, foods but you don't need to um, eat so much meat and if you start to have legumes they're more nourishing actually there are a lot more amino acids and uh, like rice and, and beans are a perfect protein and anytime you have a grain with a bean it's a perfect protein so you can make yourself some hummus or go to Mexican, have some black beans without any meat in the, in the beans. So this is what I would highly recommend. Eat your main meal at lunch because that's when it's more easily digestible. And increase your leafy greens, increase all of your vegetables. You should be eating every vegetable that under the sun. Eat all the vegetables you can get your hands on when you go out to eat. Really the plate should look like Half of your meat, half of your plate should be well cooked vegetables. We don't favor a lot of raw food uh, in, in Ayurveda because it's hard to digest. Half of your plate should be vegetables, a little bit of beans, a little bit of rice, and some spices. And so, you know, depending upon your body type, you should check in with me or with an Ayurveda wellness consultant that you uh, find out your body type and, and other factors. Uh, I'll definitely have a wellness con uh, consultation. So you've got the meditation, you've got the exercise, you've got the food, look, uh, olive oil, you know that's your go-to, garlic, you know that's also very helpful with uh, cardiovascular disease, and increasing your vegetables and having very fresh cooked food. So that's just you know, a little bit of an overview. And some other things that you can do is, Maharishi Ayurveda has some really wonderful products. So if you are taking high blood pressure medication, or high cholesterol medication, you can talk to your doctor because often doctors won't mind if you add some of the uh, herbs that they have. Google is very good for weight loss and for you know unclogging the channels and for metabolism because if you often have cardiovascular disease, not all, but a lot of people tend to be overweight. Reduce your sugar. You have to find a sugar substitute. Don't use sweet and lower the artificial sweeteners. Try fruit. Try low amounts of just really sweet fruits. And especially now in the summer, this is the time I'm making this, this video, wonderful fruits are out there. When you're hungry, keep fruit at work. And you can have an apple, maybe you have a banana. And you know, whatever you is, you know, you have to know what your body type is to know which fruits are good for you as well. So that's why a consultation is good. But even for now, eat what you like. You can't go wrong. And you don't want to overdo it with the fruit, but just as you're weaning yourself off and off of those heavy, sugary cookies, that's what's the culprit as well. And cheese, hard cheeses, a lot of fat, a lot of salt. Parmesan cheese, I believe and red meat and cheese in general is the reason for cardiovascular disease. I'm, I'm convinced of it because like I said, there are people that eat well and you know, so, but 
in conjunction with stress and all these other factors, then people are highly salting their foods because it reduces vata dosha, which some of you may not know about, but that's a bodily humor in Ayurveda. And so that you gravitate towards the salt to ground you because you're so busy and you're kind of going, you know, spinning out of control with work. And that salt helps to ground you, but it's way too much. When you go to a restaurant, oh, I'd like my Parmesan cheese on the side or omit it. I never eat Parmesan cheese unless it's already in something. And that's probably five times a year because it's just so salty. And when I eat that, if you're thirsty after you eat at night, way too much salt. The type of salt you need to be having is rock salt from the Himalayan mountains. They have it everywhere, Whole Foods and wonderful salts. not going to um, help you to retain water. It'll, it'll allow you to not retain as much water as even sea salt or the other salt. That, but you, then you have to have iodine to replace it. And go to a, a med, you know, medical doctor that is supportive of using Ayurvedic herbs and that will also do more intensified testing of full metabolic paneling, really seeing chromium and iron and, and iodine. And there's so many things that you could be deficient in, and often they don't do it enough. D3 is, is really you know the culprit in a lot of uh, health issues as well. So make sure you get a good metabolic paneling. You're seeing a doctor that supports healthy lifestyle. And, uh, and then I think you'll really be well on your way. We know that it can change. The body has its ability to enliven its own inner intelligence. And so when you start, even just in three days, I gave, I gave somebody, you know, oh, sleep is very important. So if you're not sleeping well, transital meditation will help with that. But also the time that you go to bed. Be in bed 10 o'clock, lights out. 10.30 the latest if you really have, you know, a lot of work to do. But 10.30 lights out, and that is the best sleep because between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., the body is metabolizing and going through huge transformation of all the food you've eaten during the day and trying to uh, process that into a fuel for the next day. And if you're not asleep, you're missing that. So get to bed early. Don't be a night owl. I know people say, well, I can't help it. I'm a night owl. Your health will not be good. And also... People with high blood pressure, I find they don't sleep enough and they don't sleep well. There's some underlying anxiety, especially those with high blood pressure and hypertension. Uh, you know, they have some anxiety. And that could, you know, even if they don't know it, there might be something underlying that, you know, with the, the anxiety and they don't actually recognize it. But transal meditation is great. And within a few days of, you know, people coming to me and, and getting some recommendations, they're feeling so much better. And then when, once you get the proper nutrients, maybe you're missing B vitamins, then you won't eat too much. The other problem with um, uh, cardiovascular disease is that you, these people often, people that have this, and you may be one of them, they eat too much sugar. And that the sugar can create diabetes. So you could have metabolic syndrome, which is the combination of obesity and diabetes and heart disease. And it's, it's just having the combination of those three becomes hard. Once you become diabetic, your, your situation becomes much harder to treat. Dr. Hyman talks about in his book, The High Blood Sugar Solution, do whatever you can to avoid becoming diabetic. Uh, because that, so if you are diabetic, you can still actually reverse that. Um, I had a situation with my dad. He was in the hospital. He was injecting insulin before he went in. And then when they, he was in the hospital for three months, they put him on a very good diet, probably no sugar or even low sugar. And he, when he came out, he's not needing insulin anymore. So I do believe that even if you are using insulin, that eventually with a really good diet, and with proper herbs and support, I think that, you know, depending upon how far along everything is, obviously we can't always promise, but I think you can um, definitely reverse. Uh, I've seen miracles, really, in what people can reverse. Uh, Transal meditation reduces one's chance of heart disease by about 50%. But So if you just do that alone, it also lowers insulin resistance. So that alone will help you. Uh, you know, if you are already diabetic, we are bringing transal meditation into the 
um, the Indian communities, the American Indians on the reservations that, that they actually have um, diabetes at a very, very high level. And uh, transcendental meditation has been helping them uh, really very, very, uh, very well. So um, that, those, that those could be some studies that you could look into so you can feel confident that, uh, you know, it's something that you would want to do for that. So there's so many tools to, you know, to help you. Don't feel like if you have cardiovascular disease that, you know, high blood pressure and maybe plaque buildup on the carotid arteries, atherosclerosis, whatever you might have, it is reversible. You just have to take, put attention to it and follow Ayurvedic principles that are going to change your lifestyle, <clears throat> excuse me, change your lifestyle and modify uh, things and everything is just a matter of balance and not overdoing it. It doesn't mean you can never have your favorite dessert or never have certain foods that you love. It's just a matter of the majority of the time just having a really healthy diet. And that's what I do. I, I kind of, you know, joke around with people. I mean, you know, it's like what I eat is kind of prison food. I mean, it, it just looks like mush. I, I eat these mung beans every day yellow mung beans, I have some type of a grain, and then I have my vegetable. But I love it. We put some lemon juice on it and olive oil, and I make organic, um, gluten-free, and it's also um, has no yeast in it, uh, wonderful bread, so we can have just a little piece. I could take like a little two-inch piece, not a whole lot of it. You can dip it in oil and put some Italian spices on it if you want. And um, maybe a little bit of a small salad in Ayurveda. A small salad will help to ignite the digestion, but it's very small. Uh, but, you know, vegetables, if you cook vegetables and spices and, and, you know, just salt, pepper, lemon, olive oil, they can taste amazing. These organic vegetables really bring out the flavor so you don't have to suffer. It's really a mindset of, oh, I can't do it, oh, it's too hard, oh, what happens when I go out, and then people give up completely. But if you eat really, really well most of the time, then if you go to a party and you cheat a little bit and you have a little something, it's not going to clog your arteries or, or you know, cause any damage to the arteries. You have to really make sure that all the toxicity you're putting in, the air we breathe, the food, the stress, you're, you're really – you're taking in all of the stress of your life and everything every day. If you don't have a way to manage that, it's, it's you, ha you have to actually reduce your free radical damage. That's what you're doing. All of those factors, the environment and the stress at work and then the food that you're eating and genetically modified foods, they're not going to help your fight against cardiovascular disease, I can tell you that. So absolutely, genetically modified foods, you have to go to... Um, Jeffrey Smith, he's a pioneer in helping to fight the, the, um, this fight against gen genetically modified foods. If you don't know about them, look up on his website. And very, very important that you know which foods are genetically modified. They don't have to be labeled. Good companies are labeling the foods genetically modified so that you know what you're buying. And you have to know when you go out to a restaurant what could be potentially genetically modified because the restaurants won't, restaurants won't know. So there is a lot to learn, and I've probably overwhelmed you already. But I hope that uh, I really have, and I hope that you will uh, take a lot of these um, ideas and these uh, lifestyle changes and dietary recommendations uh, you know, very seriously. And I would be happy to set up a consultation with you. Uh, and you can also go to my website for more information, and uh, that is www.yourayurvedaconsultant.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy, and perfect health to all of you.